So in the 1590s, you know, even after having his son, uh, Hideyoshi, he, he, he's getting older and he becomes very paranoid. And, um, you know, he, any opposition, real or imagined, would not be tolerated. People would be arrested and executed, even if there was a rumor that they were maybe thinking badly of Hideyoshi. And Hideyoshi's paranoia was basically centered around his son. He thought that somebody would try to harm his baby, Hideyori, his heir. And so if any, you know, if he thought that you were going to go against his baby boy, you were going to be eliminated. And there's some, you know, thoughts about Hideyoshi's declining mental state in this time. Some scholars believe that he, had, he was suffering from syphilis. And this, one of the side effects of syphilis is that it begins to impair your mental judgment and capacity. Others think that it might have been dementia. You know, others think it might have been anxiety and depression or bipolar disorder. So, you know, there's a lot of interesting theories about why Hideyoshi kind of went off the rails in the 1590s. But, you know, uh, it, we don't really know. And as a result of this declining mental state in 1592, against the advice of all his generals, Hideyoshi says, I want Japanese empire to leave behind to my son. So he decides to invade Korea and conquer Korea. He says, I, you know, Korea has done nothing to Japan. They've been peaceful friends for centuries. There was no reason for Hideyoshi to conquer Korea, but he said, I want a Japanese empire. So he, his goal is not only to conquer Korea, but he also wants to conquer China and eventually reach India and conquer India as well. And he wants to establish a Japanese empire in Asia. So Hideyoshi forces his strategists to come up with a strategy for invading Korea. And this is a horrible idea. All his generals are against it, but you don't want to go against Hideyoshi. Who knows what will happen to you? So they have no choice. And because all the daimyo warrior clans had sworn an oath of loyalty to Hideyoshi, if Hideyoshi tells them to go to Korea and fight, they have no choice but to go. Otherwise, they'll be put to death for being disloyal. So Japan invades Korea in 1592, uh, Hideyoshi's orders, and the war was very long. Okay, uh, it, At first, it was going good for the Japanese. Hideyoshi conquers many cities in Korea. Pusan is conquered. Uh, Hansong, which is now Seoul, uh, was, was conquered. They even reach Pyongyang, all the way in the north. So Japan goes pretty far north in the beginning. And this was not a peaceful invasion. There was great, great destruction in Korea. Uh, there was rape, pillage, a burning of cities. Uh, Korean potters, Korean pottery is so famous, they were actually kidnapped by, by Hideyoshi's army and taken back to Japan. They were enslaved almost uh, and taken back to Japan so that they could make pottery. Um, it was not a, a, a peaceful invasion. And these are some images of what the war was like in Korea. Uh, during the first Japanese invasion of 1592. This is uh, the Japanese attempting to scale the walls of what is today Seoul, Korea. And I believe this is a Korean uh, painting of, from the Korean perspective of the Japanese armies going to war against the Koreans. But morale was very low. The Japanese army soon became very, very tired in Korea. They didn't want to be occupying Korea. There was no reason for them to occupy Korea. There was no moral, you know, morale in the war. Uh, and many samurai became resentful of Hideyoshi. They said, we are being forced to fight here for no reason. Okay. And uh, the Japanese armies faced constant attacks from Korean and Chinese guerrilla forces. Um, the Chinese come in to help Korea during this time. And, uh, you know, so even though they've occupied cities, they have to face constant attacks from secret force, you know, Korean forces, guerrilla fighters. And eventually the Koreans begin to take back the territory that they had lost. Okay, so because the Japanese don't want to be there. So they're not really putting all of their fighting into it. Also, the Korean Navy was very successful in defeating the Japanese. You might have heard of the turtle boats. Uh, this is an example that they were very, very successful in defeating the Japanese Navy. You know, Navy. But even though the Japanese start to lose control of Korea gradually through the 1590s, Hideyoshi refuses to stop the war. He goes against his military advisors and say, I'm not stopping. I'm not, I'm, I'm not leaving Korea. And there's a truce in 1596. Finally, they, there's, a, there's a stalemate. 
But Hideyoshi has fallen ill by 1596. His mental capacity has gotten weaker and weaker and weaker. He's starting to lose his mind, hallucinate. And so in 1597, even after a stalemate, Hideyoshi invades Korea a second time. Everyone is furious, all his advisors. How could you do this? And the, no matter how many times they try to convince Hideyoshi not to do this, he just does not listen to a word they're saying. And so this time the Korean and Chinese armies are better equipped to defend their country. And um, they, they get rid of, they just constantly defeat the Japanese every chance they get. And by this point, the Japanese realize that they're not going to win in Korea. Forget getting to China or India. Korea will never be conquered. So they leave in 1598. And this war, six years, did nothing for the Japanese. There was no, the Japanese didn't gain a thing. If anything, Hideyoshi's legitimacy was damaged because many samurai were just tired and mad at him because they were forced to fight in Korea for so long, for no reason, right? It was, they called it Hideyoshi's war because there was no, it was not a matter of national defense or it, there was no reason for the war other than Hideyoshi's crazy ideas. And Korea was devastated after years of war, rape, and pillage by Hideyoshi's troops. And, uh, you know, it's a shame because Japan and Korea had been so close for many years, trading partners. Of course, Japan got Buddhism from Korea. And this was the beginning of a rocky relationship between the two countries, which we'll, we'll revisit when we look at uh, the colonial period in Korea in the 20th century.